Fox host Stuart Varney is not happy with the Republican Party. Now, earlier today on a show, uh, Varney went after the House Freedom Caucus for saying that they were going to vote no on the uh, Trump care legislation. Now, uh, the House Freedom Caucus, of course, uh, has signaled that, hey, we're not going to vote for uh, this bill. We don't think it's right wing enough. We don't think it's conservative enough. I'll get into that in a few minutes. Uh, now, but first, I want to show you the video of Stuart Varney just going absolutely apeshit on the Republican Party. Take a look. I personally believe that at this moment in time, the Republican Party is a disgrace. If you, I'm serious. I am serious. If we've elected the Republicans to run the House, the Senate, and the White House, and the very, very first thing that comes up on the legislative agenda, they vote no. They're split. They can't do it. They can't govern. I am, I'm really fit to be tied. Go ahead. Have fun. <laughs> so look, uh, he's mad. Uh, you can't really tell him that, that Britishness, but he is not happy with the Republican Party. Uh, and he's basically saying, Juan Williams, hey man, Juan, you don't like the Republican Party. You're a Democrat. Have fun. Go after him. <laughs> okay. Hey, don't mind if I do. If I were Juan Williams, I would have savaged these guys. But of course, I am not Juan Williams. Juan Williams is far nicer than I am. <laughs> Which explains why I'm never on Fox News. But anyway, so uh, this is awesome. <laughs> the Republican Party, I mean, they're split, right? You got the Freedom Caucus over on the far right. You got the moderates. You got the people in the middle that really want the fucking tax cuts and all that stuff. Oh, it is the perfect storm of not getting anything done, not getting anything passed. And you know what? We've said it before. The Republican Party as a whole, they're not really interested in governing. They are, in my view, political nihilists. They can't govern because they don't want to. They never wanted to govern in the first place. They just want to dismantle the government and sell it off to the corporations piece by piece. Right? So, look, you ever wonder why it took seven years to try to come up with this with a healthcare plan? No, it's because they didn't have one. They never actually really wanted one. And then they realized, well, if you don't put out something, then we're going to get killed in the primaries. We're going to get killed in 2018. We got to put out something to placate people just long enough for them to vote us back into office. That's how this happens. But anyway, uh, again, you know how who's holding this up is it's the Freedom Caucus. Now, what the Freedom Caucus, is, it's hilariously named because they don't really stand for freedom for people. They actually stand for freedom for corporations and freedom from paying taxes, from rich people paying taxes. They want you to pay all the taxes. They don't want rich people to pay all the taxes because rich people are who fund the Freedom Caucus that give money to all these politicians. And of course, um, the people who are, who are controlling this and are giving all the money are the Koch brothers. Now, what's funny is that this bill in itself is a $600 billion tax cut for the rich. The wealthiest Americans are going to save billions of dollars in taxes because they don't have to fund the Medicaid tax. They don't have to fund the subsidies under Obamacare. They can't wait to get rid of those taxes to hoard their money. Now, Donald Trump and some of the moderate Republicans thought, okay, look, Putting in this tax cut, these are huge. This is what we wanted, right? We wanted to cut taxes for rich people. We want to cut taxes for ourselves and for our donors. They thought that $600 billion in tax cuts were going to be enough. And enough for the Koch brothers. See, what Trump and the others don't seem to understand is that the, the greed of the Koch brothers and the Freedom Caucus are endless. See, and, and what they do is that they pay all these congressmen to be more extreme to be even more right-wing, to cut taxes and government even more, to the bone. And they're not going to be happy until they get everything. Everything. And look, this bill, this bill already punches poor people and old people in the face. But obviously, to them, to the Koch brothers, to the Freedom Caucus, people like Louis Gohmert doesn't punch them hard enough. Doesn't punch them in the face enough. And see, this is what living under right-wing governance looks like. It's not governments, it's nihilism. All for the benefit of the rich. And the rich, if they don't get it all, well, then they're going to sabotage themselves. 
as we're going to see on this vote today. They're going to sabotage themselves very likely. And look, there, there's two different outcomes here, right? So, uh, but before I get to that, let me explain the situation. Republicans are caught between two different sides, really. You, you've got the people who don't want to get destroyed in elections for kicking everybody off health care, right? Voting for this horrendous bill. This is a bill that will kick 24 million people off their health insurance, that will raise premiums and uh, deliver less service. Well, these moderates in these states are like, whoa, dude, this is, this is so extreme. Uh, nobody's going to want to uh, uh, vote for us if we pass this bill. And look at all these town halls. If you've been paying attention, we've been getting crushed. We've been getting destroyed over this health care bill. Don't pass it. Don't pass it. This is a horrific piece of legislation. We're going to we're going to get destroyed out in the polls. So that's one side. Then you got sort of the middle. You got people like Stuart Varney who are like, just pass it already because we get our tax cuts. Just pass. We don't care about poor people. We think poor people got it too well here in America. Then that famous Stuart Varney segment where he's like, ah, poor people. They got a microwave. They got a refrigerator. They're not actually poor, so we don't need to actually give them health insurance. Fuck that. No, no. All I want is I want the tax cuts. That's it. And then you have the far right. The the Freedom Caucus, the people funded by the Koch brothers that are like, no, we, we don't just want this, these $600 billion in tax cuts. Not enough. Not good enough. Not right wing enough. It doesn't cut our taxes enough. We want everything. We want it all. So you better hurry up and give us all that we want or we're going to walk. Those are the people that want no taxes, no government. Look to the voters. What do you expect when you vote for people like this? Are you expecting them to save your health care? No, no, no. What you don't understand is they don't give a shit about your health care. They don't care. Now, onto the political implications of this. It's going to blow up in their face. One way or the other, it's blowing up in their face. For one, if they actually do pass Trump care, well, this is going to be a tremendous failure for all the reasons that we've laid out before. 24, people, 24 million people losing their health insurance, skyrocketing premiums, et cetera, et cetera, right? And with uh, some of the changes proposed to this health care bill, no significant deficit reduction because they're giving more tax cuts, of course. Now, if it doesn't pass, then it looks awful. It is a political failure of epic proportions. And that's what Varney was alluding to. If they don't pass this, it breaks campaign promises. And then people have no trust in Republican governance. So that's a failure going into 2018. So there is no, there's no winning here. Nobody's winning. Nobody's winning. Trump is especially not winning in this. Because he's the head guy out there. Now, in 2018, if the, if the Democrats are successful at getting their heads out of their asses and actually running on a vision, maybe a Bernie Sanders-style health care plan to put up against Trump care and Obamacare, there could be a political bloodbath waiting for Republicans in 2018. Because it's just as like Varney said, the Republicans, they do not know how to govern. And that's because they don't care about governing and they're not interested in learning how to govern. And that's what the Republican Party is about. Not governing and just taking as much as they can, dismantling government and selling off as much as they can to large multinational corporations. This is why the Republican Party will never be a governing party under uh, under this type of leadership under this type of orthodoxy and that's why ultimately they will never be successful hey everybody thanks for watching this video if you want to see more like this please hit the subscribe button below and if you want to support truly independent progressive media please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash tyt nation